Welcome to the Gorilla Girls, an overview by Lauren George. I've often asked myself, where did our nation's history come from? Who is responsible for deciding who and what would be documented in our history books? Where was everyone else? And who or what was left out of the story? Whose history is it anyway? I heard a story once about a man who invented a product and went on to earn millions of dollars and national recognition with his invention. Later, news broke that the original idea was designed by someone else who had posted it on Facebook. The hero that was recognized took the idea, funded it, and received all of the recognition and profits. In our consumer-driven world, money talks, and the people or organizations that have the money control the market. This truth is visible in many businesses that fuel our economy, including the display and sale of artwork. In 1985, a group of seven women artists in the Soho District of New York City formed a coalition called the Guerrilla Girls. The group was organized in response to an international art survey held at the Museum of Modern Art in 1984. It had been vocalized by the survey's curator that any artist not in the show should rethink his career. The show featured 169 artists and only 13 of those were women, none of whom were women of color. Female artists were tired of being dismissed and chose to spend the next few decades drawing attention to the discriminatory behaviors seen in the art world. Leading up to the 1980s, the American people were apprehensive and for good reason. The Vietnam War had been a disaster that divided the country. Richard Nixon had been removed from office due to the Watergate scandal and the oil embargo had caused inflation and large unemployment rates. The American people were left tired, cynical, and untrusting. They began seeking personal empowerment on their own. By 1984, technology was on the rise. Bill Gates started Microsoft, Apple introduced its first computer, and Nintendo appeared in the American home. As a result of technological innovations, many actors and musicians released one-of-a-kind productions that would later be named some of the most successful works in their career. Fittingly, Bruce Springsteen spoke about American hope and pride in his iconic album, Born in the USA. The Guerrilla Girls started the describe themselves as the new art conscience. They're said to be one of the most successful feminist groups to emerge in the 1980s. To preserve their own artistic identities, they assume the names of deceased female artists and even donned guerrilla masks when gathering in public. Feminism from the 1970s had a poor reputation. It was viewed as aggressive and anti-male. So the guerrilla girls felt they needed to seek a new way to communicate as feminists. Their approach was confrontational, controversial, and often humorous. Their methods looked like silent protests that began pasting large rebellious posters on the walls of buildings in Soho. The girls gathered information and research and applied their findings and conclusions to these posters. Combined with their data and their artist artistic marketing knowledge, the result was very bold, clear conversations posted on city walls. In 1989, a poster that appeared that stated, when racism and sexism are no longer fashionable, what will your art collection be worth? Below the large black heading on the poster was a sub-statement that discussed the $1.7 million purchase price of a Jasper Johns artwork, followed by the names of more than 60 women artists. The text stated that the art piece that one art piece from every female artist posted could have been purchased with the money that was used to buy the single John's piece. Although they were ahead of their time, their tactics proved to be successful as the art world eventually began to listen. The Guerrilla Girls' involvement in art activism spanned several decades. They hung posters, they mailed bold letters to art collectors, visited college schools, and participated in interviews, programs, and exhibits. Initially, they began protests to bring awareness to a group of underrepresented artists. Now their memorabilia is collected and displayed in museums all over the world as they are considered to be vitally important works of art. So in the words of Guerrilla Girl Frida Kahlo, if you're too afraid to speak up, put on a mask and you'll be surprised at what comes out. <laughs>